waiting and relying on leaders to change our lives. Clearly, it's not the solution. The Nkrumah, he done the dam in the 60s, right? Yeah. And still we've got lights off. So clearly, something's not right. Everything's done before. Poverty has been going on for hundreds of years. So if we keep on doing the same thing, we're going to get the same results. I'm saying that it's not an overnight affair. Success doesn't happen overnight. Yeah. And there are no shortcuts. But what I'm saying is everything has been done before. I'm not the first person to be made a king. I'm not the first father. You're not the first son. Everything is there for us to learn from. Mm. And I'm saying that on the journey, because it's so long, sometimes having hope and inspiration is what will carry you through to the next stage. But the beginning is to start reading the right educational books on wealth. How are you all doing? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. It's your favorite village boy, Mr. Ghana Baby, right here. And it's my first time in Bono region. They actually call this place Sunyani. It used to be the cleanest city in Ghana, but I don't know what happened. I, I really don't know. But since I'm here for the first time, I really want to find out what really happened to Sunyani. What really happened? I, I don't even know. The youth, the youth. The, oh, you mean the youth destroyed the city? Well, we are fond of throwing away some things that our mothers and fathers weren't doing. Okay, but still, we, we, we won the title. We won the title. You, still, you won the title, yeah, but? Yeah, we are competing with Kofi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them something that they need to know about Sunyani. So, yeah, Sunyani is very popular for the distribution of staple foods like mm. maize and yam. Like, you have a whole land, like a lot of farms around here. Okay. So, when foods are like increasing in other places here, we it, doesn't, eat good. it doesn't affect you guys. No, we eat good. No. Welcome to Peku Goli! I'm not here because of her. I'm here because today is actually the coronation and instrument of my friend, which is happening two hours drive away from here. But because of this beautiful queen, I have to stop by here. Oh, can I get a hug? You know, a hug in the city. <laughs> That was a Christian and a traditional prayer. In every festival here in Ghana, both prayers must be observed. Sometimes if the person is a Muslim, they also gonna pray the Muslim prayer. Now, let the real coronation begin. Very good afternoon. Uh, and you know why I'm here today? Well, of course I know why you're here. You know why I'm here? Why am I here? Well, you are coming to support us, you know, for the integration and installment. Exactly. But my culture background is not that strong. Yeah? Okay. And that is why I really wanted to know what yeah. happens mm -hmm. in here so that I will educate myself and okay. also educate my audience. Can okay. you tell me all about what is happening in here today? Okay. Let, first of all, let me just ask you, have you been to this area at all before in your life? It's my first time. Obviously here in Doma and in Crow. 
and this village is called Insania, obviously, you can see from the entire roads and all that. But it's our route, you know, so obviously we like it. Now, what happened today is the instrument of Nana Oshri, Kwesi Udikain. Congratulations. All right. Thank Can you. I have a seat? Of course. I really want to have a conversation with you. Yeah. Thank you. My first question will be, what does this day mean to you? Wow. I would say it's the biggest day of my life, along with having my children. Hmm. I really want to know, yeah? Yeah. Why is your son on the throne? Because he was chosen by the family. Of course, my, my mom had six children, and all the six children, and the six children, children, any of them could have been crowned today, but mm. the family chose my son. It's the first time that we have installed the Nifahini here in Insania. That's never the, happened before? It's never happened before, the first time. But so that's why we all travel all the way from the UK and support it. Obviously, we had a great time. You're not born in Ghana. No. You're born and raised? In West London, yes. In West London. Yeah. And at what point did you come back here? Well, 1991, when I was 11 years old, I came to Bonhoeffer region for the mm. first time. Mm. Came to the village, mm. a village called Wonfie. It's my mom's town. Obviously, we are the root of Mami Rebecca Yabua's clan. And the thing is, the reason why I came down where my nephew has been chosen as the king is that he's quite an ambitious person, you know? Very serious person, you, you know, obviously you know him. And so we are here to support him and we had a great time, you know? I wanted to speak in with my tradition doesn't I want to know what is going on right now. What are they doing? Uh, before the actual coronation, this is one of the major events that took place. We will take the chief to be around the town as a sign of showing them showing him to the public. So they are doing this before the actual coronation. This part of the coronation. This part of the coronation. Yeah, one, of, one of the major events. Oh, okay. Before, then, before they put him on the seat three times, before he put on the actual slipper. But I, I've actually seen him going from one corner to another. Yeah. Does it mean that he has to go to every corner of the yeah, town? The four corners of the town. The four corners of the yeah. town. For everybody to know that they have a new chief. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. So after this, what next? After this, they take him inside to the palace and they, they make the king sit on the stool. All right. Thank you so much for talking to me. Okay. After moving around the four corners of the village, they bring him back to the palace and the elders of the village accept him as their chief. And that is when he swears in that he will uphold and defend the good name of the stool. The people of Insania has a new chief and it's time for celebration. But since the chief was born and raised in the UK, he had to celebrate in style with Moet. Uh -huh. 
What does it mean by the right hand king? Good. Like I told you before, yeah, we are the clan of the Ajia now. Okay. And our king is Osajivo Osajivo Ajima Medu in the palace. It's about five miles from here. And the Nifa means that you are the right hand to them. So the, this chief is, you know, he is also acting as an advisor to the Ajiana people. And our main objective, when you go to the palace, we are like the Ochiame, the Linkis. Mm. That's our main duty. Mm. When you come to like, like when you go, obviously, yeah, they have the Ochiame there. So uh, he, over in this particular town, our main duty to the, to the Osaji Forest Palace, call Abam Predasi. Our, when our king sit down, then we will say, oh, Tio, 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 that is our main thing that we do. So now Nana Oshira has been installed, yeah. He will go there and when Osaji will sit down, on the right hand side, he will say, oh, yeah, Nana, listen to him. Nana Okasa, Nana Tiowa. That is our main job at our palace. I want to say thank you so much for educating us. Yep. I appreciate you. Thank you. you. didn't tell me your name. Oh, Eric KK Quartin. Eric KK Quartin. Yes. It's a pleasure meeting you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you all are enjoying the video so far. I just want to ask you a question. Have you liked the video? Or have you shared the video? Please, it's by force to like, share, so that others will be able to see this video. The entire elders of the village congratulate him and welcome him to the palace. All hail the new chief of Insania. And after that, the chief needs to address his own people. But listen, I've been to so many occasions, but the speech that this new chief gave was heartwarming. And I believe that it's definitely gonna touch your heart. Today, I want to tell a short story. As a child, I remember living in London with my mom and my sister. I remember my mom struggling to raise me and my sister, working three jobs. As soon as I was old enough, I made it my duty to change the poverty. 1991, I was 11 years old. I came to Ghana for the first time. I came to Ongye, and this is when I saw Africa. I saw my grandfather for the first time. He was a chief in Ongye. He had 44 children and 300 grandchildren. I, what I saw was entrepreneurship, I saw farming, I saw opportunities and it sparked me to become an entrepreneur. So fast forward to 2009, I was age 29, I was doing my business in the UK and then the recession hit. Times were hard. I was driving around in Porsches, living a luxury lifestyle and then God took it all away. So I had to work three jobs, just like my mom. Life got so hard, I had to feed my three children, but life was so hard. I remember I was so broke. The journey from my crowd to Kumasi, I was driving one day in UK. I had no windscreen wipers, no wipers in the car, and the rain was raining. I said, God, why? I kept on asking God, God, why? And one day, somebody sent me a link to a book. I was given a book that told a story about America and a book where a man in America followed 500 of the richest men in America and studied how they became wealthy. I found that books became my food and through the books I helped to secure and cure my poverty. The wealth, reading about wealth, helped to change my life from poverty. So my next point, if, if you're driving on a road and the road has a bend and every day that bend there is an accident, in my opinion there must be a problem on the road that we need to change, right? My point is that, you know, we have to stop waiting around for bad leaders to come and change our life. The world is changing at a rapid rate. In Japan, they have a bullet train, can get you from my car to Ensenya in 20 minutes. But we shouldn't wait around for bad leaders to come and help us. When you go to the banks in the UK, there's no more people. It's now machines. Now, we've got Uber in Ghana. But in America, they're designing, designing a car. They will have no driver. 
medicine for the future. Now you go to the doctor, but in the future you go to the toilet, you ginso, you you urinate, and all your medical information will come from the water. We must not wait around for bad leaders. The law of attraction says your mind is like a magnet. What you think about, you will become. So if you're thinking about poverty and hardship, that's what will come. The problem is not just bad leaders. We have to set our minds free. The airplane was designed by the mind. Computers by the mind. Electricity by the mind. We need to start teaching ourselves wealth education. Wealth education. I'm nearly finished. There's a saying. Government education will make you a living. Self-education will make you a fortune. Let my story of escaping poverty to become a success, let that be the seed. Let's stand together and organize our minds. Let's build our own powerful mini economies from the villages across Africa. And let's think big. If you've learned anything from me today, then stand behind me. If you've learned anything from me today, stand behind me. A word to the wise is enough. Such a beautiful, heartwarming speech from our new chief. And I really wanted to know how did he find out that he's going to be the new chief of this village. I actually found out about five years ago through my grandmother. The stool was there. At the time I was doing business, um, property developing, property investing, also a tough journey. And I think at that time I was not of age. I think to become a king you had to be around age 40 because they want to see that your life experiences have been enough for you, for you to, to, you know, help the community. Mm. So I was aware about it, but it took about five years for it to come into fruition. But I, I think I was here when they started the whole event. And when they were advising you, I think all of them were talking about development. Yes. You must be creative. And that's all you can learn out to you. It's all to me, you be. I'm here to you. You're just with you. You must be peacemaker. Maybe I won't be whatever you are. What about some best news in your mind? You need a market. You need a drink. I want to buy some new book. And then my own bank for a bit of it. Now, not a drink. What about? You have a father. You have a drink. You have a money. Yes, of course. Can you let me know because I'm very inquisitive and I really want to know the plans that you have for the whole town. As I was saying earlier, I feel that, you know, Africa, we are very rich in resources, natural resources. We have everything under our feet, but I don't think we utilize it. The everyday man doesn't get the opportunity to, to utilize it. So my thing is, we have to start changing the way that we use our minds and try and get away from this poverty mindset, thinking that we're owed something, 
thinking that our governments are going to hand something down to us. Mm. My thing is to start learning how people became successful and follow these success patterns to become successful ourselves. So in short, my plans are to help develop our minds through books and teachings. So, so currently as a queen of the village, mm. yeah, what, what kind of plans do you have I mean, for the community in general? I think you have to listen to the community before you can kind of plan, first and foremost. So I think we're open to, to um, have the ideas come from, from the people here because they know what they need mm. more than we know what we need by passing mm. through a few weeks, a year, it's not going to give you the, the, the full picture of what's, what people need here. But I think it's clear that, you know, the youth uh, needs some kind of form of, uh, I don't want to say entertainment, but activity. So it's good. important to kind of concentrate on the youth, youth side of things, um, you know, and practical things. You know, could can see we're considered fortunate in Western, where we're not in, in the UK, and I think, um, when you come to Ghana, especially the village, you do realise that we've had certain advantages probably than people who live here in the village. Mm. So I think it's important really to, to try and share those advantages. Um, George is very focused on enriching the mind, which I totally agree with. I think it's important for people to be educated because it, without education, it's hard to know what to do next. So I think there's also practical things that people need here. What I can see is like... And you, you think the people of this town are ready for that book knowledge? Because, it, you know, like in, in Ghana, we all talk about money, money, but you're talking about wealth inside a book. Yes. How are that's you going to change that? That's the start, because everybody needs to be inspired. Everybody needs hope. Sometimes, what you're hoping for may not come, but the hope in between the journey is what keeps you going. So once you start to acquire the knowledge on how people became successful, and you take those ingredients, the hope inside will start to build. It's a journey. Um, you're talking about you're into properties in the UK. Yeah. What about in Ghana? Are you doing anything like that? Yes. In Ghana, we're doing a bit of land acquisition and we're going to do affordable luxury in the Bonahafa region. So we're talking to um, landowners at the minute. It takes time. Um, we're about to do some land surveys and searches, but it's in the Bonahafa region between Sunyani and Ensenya. Well, I, I just want to ask you if you had the chance to change one thing, in Ghana, what will you change? Good question. It might sound harsh, but it's blame. Let's stop blaming people and let's take responsibility. Let's take control of our minds. Let's focus. Because to me, as I said, everything's done before. Poverty has been going on for hundreds of years. So if we keep on doing the same thing, we're going to get the same results waiting and relying on leaders to change our lives. Clearly, it's not the solution. Because mm. as I said, in Krumah, he'd done the dam in the 60s, right? Yeah. And still we've got lights off. So clearly, something's not right. What do you, what do you think is wrong there? I think part, partly, it's not just a Ghana problem. I think it's globally, the education system basically doesn't teach you enough. It doesn't teach you how to really become successful. It more teaches you to just have the basics of life, maybe have a simple job, but it doesn't take you to the final level. And that's a global, it's not just Ghana, it's a global system. What should your people expect from you, and that you are their leader, what should they expect from you? They should expect that I'm going to push to open their minds and for them to take responsibility with me. That's the difference. I'm not making any promises. I promise I'll work hard. But I can't change people's lives without them putting the work in. And being open, open-minded to learn something different, to learn something new. Do you have a message for Africans living in the diaspora? 
message will be, I think we're at a time in the world where we're becoming more conscious. Maybe if we had this conversation 10 years ago, many people wouldn't even understand a lot of the stuff we're talking about. But I think the universe, the world is changing. We're becoming more conscious. We understand that we're superheroes. We understand that we're God's people. We understand our potential, our strength. So stand behind people when you think they're, they may be different. Give those people a chance, like myself. It's time to start doing things differently. How does it feel like being married to a Ghanaian or an African? Well, like we keep on ex ex expressing, we're all one. So I would think it would feel like the same as I was married to a Jamaican or what have you. We're all one people. So um, I'm, I know I'm blessed to be married to George, to Nana. Um, in general, but I mean, we, we, we all are the same, the same people, so. So how often do your kids go to Jamaica? We've been once. once? <laughs> I've, been, I've been a few times, they've been once. Um, I've been a few times, three times, same as, same as Ghana. Well, what are you going to tell your fellow Jamaican brothers and sisters out there? I mean, you're on the continent, you're on the motherland right yeah. now. Yeah. What will be your message for them? Come, come to Ghana, definitely. Experience it for yourself. I mean, like you said, it, in, in, in the West, you can have a certain um, overview of what Africa is about. Until you come here and experience it for yourself, you're not going to know. So I encourage everyone to come, see Ghana, enjoy the, enjoy the heritage, um, the people, my earring, the people, um, the culture, the food. It, it, you can't go wrong. Do you think um, Jamaica and Ghana have things in common? Definitely, definitely. I think. Um, when I went to Jamaica, the same as when I landed in Ghana, I felt the same kind of um, spiritual peace. Uh, the people are very similar as well. Um, and it's beautiful. Both islands are, are, are extremely, or country islands, are extremely beautiful. The greenery, uh, I wouldn't say Jamaica's got as much culture as Ghana, but um, I think the people are very similar. Food are both, both fantastic. <laughs> I couldn't choose which one <laughs> is the is best. My preference. Food is, uh, yeah. <laughs> No, I, I want to say thank you so much oh, you. and I uh, wish you all the best you and so hope much. to see you again. You too. What do you do in my darkest days when I was in hundreds of thousands of pounds in debt having to feed my three children? This book helped to change my life. And today, to honour you for coming and making a huge effort and taking our story to the world. I honor you with this book. Think and grow rich. Thank you, Nana, for this. And I hope that when I grow rich, I don't want to grow rich yet, but I want to become wealthy. And I believe that the wealth is in this book. Mm -hmm. And I want to say thank you once again. I appreciate you. Mm -hmm. And congratulations once again. Sole Lagoon View Estate, a development of the luxury Emerald property, is located on the Pram Pram Road, five minutes away from the Pram Pram Beaches. Prices start from $25,000 for a one-bedroom apartment. We have two-bedroom terrace units going for $40,000. We also have the two-bedroom semi-detached and the price is $55,000. We finally have the two bedroom detached expandable. The going price is $65,000. Emerald Properties, luxury home, great value.